Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and today we will be discussing some random problems in cost accounting. So we have three problems in the board and we will just be solving them. These are the easy ones, okay? And uh, the purpose is just to refresh your knowledge of cost accounting, okay? Let's start with this one. Honey Manufacturing currently produces 1,000 bicycles per month. The following per unit data apply for sales to regular customers. So we have direct materials per unit of $50, direct labor per unit of 5 variable overhead of 14 fixed overhead of 10 with a total manufacturing cost of $79. Now, the plant has capacity of 3,000 bicycles and is considering to expand production to 2,000 bicycles. So starting from 1,000 bicycles, they want to expand production to 2,000 bicycles. And they can do that because the total plant capacity can hold up to 3,000 bicycles. Now the question is, what is the per unit cost of producing 2,000 bicycles? Now, um, it's easy to say that the answer is still 79 because we it's already um, expressed on a per unit. So... Okay, I can just use 79 because whatever level of production, I can just use 79 as my manufacturing cost. Uh, that's not how you wouldn't do that, <laughs> okay? So it's very important for you to look at the variable component and the fixed cost component of your manufacturing cost. Remember that your direct materials, direct labor and overhead is the variable portion and the fix is basically the fixed, okay? And this is where things get a little complicated. Not really complicated, it's just that you have to segregate it in your analysis. Okay, now look here. You are already manufacturing 1,000 bicycles and then you want to expand to 2,000 bicycles. And I have, I have said earlier that you can actually do it because you can do up to 3,000. Now, the thing is, Remember that the nature of fixed cost is from zero production to, and for this problem, 3,000 bicycles, it doesn't actually change. Your fixed cost doesn't actually change. However, the $10 here actually came from the 1,000 bicycles. This information of $10 per unit of fixed overhead came from the production of 1,000 bicycles. So we have to compute first for the total fixed cost, okay? So your fixed cost is $10 fixed cost per unit multiplied by 1,000 bicycles. That is 1,000 times 10. Oops, okay. 1,000 times 10. Talaga na calcu pa ako, no? $10,000. Okay. Now, this is where the trick uh, of the question is. You can just simply answer 79. However, from zero production up to the maximum normal capacity of 3,000, your fixed cost would still be $10,000. Okay? And then let's accustom it first based on your materials, labor, and overhead. Okay? So what you do is like this. So for your direct materials, so we have $50 times, if you're considering 2,000, that will be 2,000. So 50 times 2,000, that is $100,000. For direct labor, that is $5 times 2,000. Ten thousand, and then for your variable overhead of fourteen dollars times two thousand, that is twenty eight thousand. Then we get the total ten thousand plus one hundred thousand plus ten plus twenty eight. That gives you one hundred forty eight thousand dollars. This is your total manufacturing cost in producing 2,000 bicycles. Again, however, we still stay at $10,000 worth of fixed cost because from zero production to 3,000 units 
production of bicycles, you will still have the same fixed cost. Okay? Now, the question is, what is the per unit cost of producing 2,000 bicycles? So, coming from that 148,000, you simply divide it by 2,000 units, and that will be your answer. So, 148,000 divided by 2,000, that is 74. So, the answer here is 74. Okay? So, don't directly answer 79 because the trick is here in your fixed overhead. Okay, next. Head and Company manufactures several different products and the unit cost associated with the product NWJNS002 are as follows. So have, we have direct materials of uh, 60, direct labor of 10, variable overhead of 18, fixed overhead of 32, sales commission of 4, and administrative salaries of 16. Let's compute for the per unit amounts of variable cost, fixed cost, inventoryable cost, and period cost. More than a problem, this is just actually a review of the concepts, right? Okay. Now, your variable cost would be your direct materials of 60, your direct labor of 10, your variable overhead of 18, and your sales commission of 4. So 60 plus 10 plus 18 plus 4, that gives you 92. Then, for your fixed cost per unit, that is your fixed overhead of 32. And your administrative salaries of 16. 32 plus 16, the answer is 48. Inventoriable cost per unit, or basically, you know that as product cost per unit. So, you know the product cost already, right? Materials of 60, labor of 10, variable overhead of 18, and fixed overhead of 32. And that is 120. Lastly, for period cost, basically your operating expenses, that's your sales commission of 4 and administrative salaries of 16, which is 20. Okay, last one. August 2023 cost data from New Zines Company. So you are given beginning and ending balances of raw materials inventory, work and process inventory, and finished goods. And then raw materials used, direct labor, and overhead or manufacturing overhead compute for cost of goods sold. Now, this is actually... A very easy problem because you just have to use the formula for the statement of cost of goods manufactured and sold however if you get very excited what you will do here is RMU sometimes students mistaking this for the RM purchased because their thinking is that raw materials beginning plus purchases raw materials available for use minus raw materials ending that is direct materials used. So sometimes when you get too excited, you use this as your purchases and that's wrong. And if you want to do the shortcut, this is actually very easy because they already gave you the direct materials used, the direct labor, and the overhead. And this three represents your total manufacturing cost already. So as far as the materials are concerned, you don't need this anymore right so you go directly to your total manufacturing cost calculation so direct materials of 612 direct labor of 748 and overhead of 564 that is your total manufacturing cost so 612 plus 748 plus 564, that is 1,924,000. Since the problem asks you of the ultimate amount, which is cost of goods sold, we can just do it like this. Work in process beginning. That's 372,000. Don't show the total cost of work put into process anymore. You don't need that unless it's being asked in the problem. Since what you are being asked is the ultimate amount, you can just simply do this. Work in process ending directly deduct for 36,000. 
okay, let's say for example, the cost of goods manufactured is being asked. Okay, you can do this actually, CGM. So, 1924 plus 372 minus 436, then that's 1,860,000. And do the same for your finished goods. So, finished goods inventory beginning, that is 224,000. And then, finished goods inventory ending, that is 196,000. And that is your cost of goods sold. So, cost of goods sold. 1860 plus 224 minus 196. Then, the answer is 1,888,000. Ah, sorry, 1,888,000. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Now, actually here, if um, in the problem, cost of goods manufactured is needed, you can compute it. In case cost of goods available for sale, you stop here first. Total cost of work put into process, you can stop here. Okay, and in case the purchases are being asked, you can actually work back because you have your direct materials used. You also have your raw materials ending, then you can get this, you have your beginning, and you can work back for the purchases. Okay? Sometimes it is actually in the easy problems where we get mistakes. Okay? Because sometimes students think that since the problem is too easy, they just do it uh, abruptly. And uh, look at this. Since you are being given a pro materials beginning and ending, and then most of the problems give you raw materials purchased. However, it already gave you your materials labor and overhead. So you don't actually need to compute your materials calculation as part of your cost of goods sold. So take, um, take caution on those kinds of easy problems, but uh, sometimes students get mistakes on those easy problems because they they get too excited on the problem okay so i hope the insights here will help you in solving problems in cost accounting thank you and have a great